Meanwhile, all the cars were on fire and, and then it traveled to here and I was like, oh. His cars were torched and his shop was going up quickly. It was burning on the, the wood down low and I didn't have any water. I had one barrel with like a little bit of water in it and I tried using that, it didn't work. He grabbed the only liquid he had left, cans of Bud Light. When I ripped up the sheet metal, it had a nail. So I was just shaking it up, popping it, and just spraying and throwing it down, grabbing another one. And my buddies always tease me about, uh, you know, drinking water, beer. And I say, hey, save mine, my shop. <laughs> well, there's one good thing about Bud Light. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Guy puts out fire with Bud Light. That's right. What's that say? Water beer. That's great. Water beer, I know. That's awesome. <laughs> Welcome to the Atomic Beer Show. My name is Josh. And I'm Don. And we are here to talk about beer. Lots and lots of beer. And we also talk about those awesome people that make that beer. That's right. And share the cool stories about us doing whatever we do. Yeah, which is a lot of crazy things. So, yes. But yeah, well, if you enjoyed the show, we thank you so much for finding us. If this is the first time, welcome. You can also find us on our Podcast, podcast, at Apple, where, so Apple many places podcast, now. Okay, Podbean, Apple Podcast, Podbean, Spotify, Spotify, Amazon Music, now. Amazon Music. I now. think we're on Amazon Music now, right? Yeah. And then there's the Facebook. Well, that's that's the social media aspect of it. So and then the Instagram, Facebook, and the Instagram Twitter, and the Twitter. And then we have the mothership at www.atomicbeershow.com. That is correct. We do. And Josh has been doing a really good job of updating that. <sighs> that's a question, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. We're working yeah. on it. Uh, yeah, it's always, uh, you know, work in progress. But we would definitely, well, first of all, I want to say that we are having a beer tasting ish kind of thing going on today. And I would like to welcome to our show, Mr. Robert Cummings. <laughs> and uh, Robert is a, um, I, I, I mean, would you say you're a fan of craft beer or just kind of like not a big. Not huge on it. Okay. So. Like, never really got into it too much. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted you yeah. to say. <laughs> no, so our what we're doing today, because those of you that listen to the show and have heard Don and I say multiple times that one of our goals is to, you know, share our love and passion of craft beer to other people and to find folks that, um, and nothing against once you drink, you know, you drink beer? Yes. I love you for oh. it. You know, that's it. Sorry, well, that, yeah. that was a question to me. <laughs> yeah, yes, I do, <laughs> sir. Of course I do. Um, but it's just to, our goal is to bring some different beers and different styles to you to try and you get free beer out of the process, which is cool. Yeah. And just, you may or may not like it. Yeah. You know, and I, what I want what we want to do is try to get you to, um, I have some beers that you, I know you'll like, and it's similar to what you drink, but it's a craft version of it. And why that, why, why the craft is important to us is, do you drink coffee? No. You don't drink coffee. Okay. So that, that analogy is going right out the window. But, um, (laughs) But if you if, if you like uh, but you like small businesses yeah okay okay <laughs> there we go <laughs> okay so a craft brewer is a small business that uh, you know they're trying to make a niche in their market or whatever and it's it's more local um, you support your local community things like that when you had the big beer companies that come in and just that if you res- I did a lot of research on the dist- distribution of beer and how they just take over grocery stores and don't let the little guy in. So I'd like to stick it to the big beer as much as I can. And so if I can, the more people I can get to convert to the craft beer, sometimes it's a little bit more expensive. And I get that. And that's by design because you're getting a quality beer as opposed to something that's mass produced. Did you know like Miller Lite, Bud Light, things like that drop more beer on the floor in a day than they produce in a brewery in like a year? Oh, wow. Something like that. It's something crazy like that. So, but yeah, so that's our goal today is to have you taste some good beers. I know you're not going to like some of them, but... I really did think on some of these that it's not like so bad because I th- I think what, what's the one beer that you would say you don't really like right now? The I'm not a big fan of IPAs or okay. uh, the sours. Okay, perfect. Yeah, uh, yeah and that's, that's good. And that that's good yeah. because I was definitely you at one point. I could not stand yeah. IPAs. I hated IPAs. I, I slowly got I go, Don to come I, around to IPAs. Yeah, and I go through my spurts. Yeah, and he likes sours before I like sours. So it's, it's, it's a strange thing. It's definitely like an acquired taste in a lot of things. And I think a lot of folks that uh, listen to the show will agree that we go through the gamut of different styles and different tastes of beer. And it's, it's, and it's fun to taste different things. And, yeah. and there's stuff we don't like, you know, that's for sure. I mean, I was crazy like, when we were thinking about doing the show with him. I was like totally thinking like, okay, where am I drinking right now? 
and it's either 5% or it's like 14%. I don't have anything really in the middle right now. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> he'll come in and he'll have a bottle and be like, yeah, well, I got this beer here in the... Oh, it's 13.5%. Yeah. Like, well, we got one coming up maybe in two episodes that from the brewery that's close to 19%. So we'll, we'll see how we can tackle that one. Yeah. <laughs> tackle it? <laughs> it's going to tackle me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All good. All good. So, hey, before we get started, mm-hmm. let's. the three of us went to Joshua Tree, and this is Josh's first time to Joshua Tree National yeah. Park. Yeah. So, I mean, Robbie and I love the place. How many times have we been there? Like way too many. Yeah. Way too many. Like we know it almost like the back of our hand, which is great. Um, so what did you think? I mean, granted, we got there kind of late, so you only got to see it a little bit during the day, and yeah. then we were doing night photography and stuff. Right. So yeah. Yeah. like, how did you like it? What, what were your feelings about Joshua Tree? Well, you know, it's one of the places I've been wanting to go to for, a long, for a while, and I'm kind of, I kick myself all the time moving out here that I haven't been there yet. And I, I'm a big fan of national parks and everything, and it's it's... I'm already looking to get my national park pass so I can just go back out. And I uh-huh. want to go like every other week or every three yeah. weeks if I yeah. can. That's, yeah. that's what I want to do. Yeah. I mean, the great thing for us, it's a two, two and a half hour drive. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's super close and it's super manageable to do that. So that's what's cool about it. I, I, I loved it. I, you know, even there for a little bit, it was definitely something different than I've done in the last five months. Yeah. So it was, it was nice to get out. We've been so. out there twice during the shutdown, right? Yeah. Twice. I right when we they first twice. reopened yeah. and then. Right when all the riots started. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Because we were coming home and we thought we were going to get stuck yeah. on a freeway somewhere because oh, geez. people were throwing stuff off the overpass. Yeah, right, oh, there, really? right there in Riverside. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Luckily, nothing happened. So. Riverside. Oh, it was all good. All right. It was all good. Well, yeah. So. But no, I, I, I thought Josh Tree was great. And, you know, I, like I always joke because my name's Josh and I should go to Joshua Tree and I named my son Bryce after Bryce Canyon. So it's, you know. If I have another kid, I'm, my name marches. I don't know. Zion. <laughs> Zion. There you go. <laughs> I'm like, did you name him after Candy. Zion Williamson? No. And I didn't name Bryce after Bryce Harper. Like, stop, everybody. It's funny. One of the, when I was coaching uh, in Cerritos a couple of years ago, we had a guy um, named Zion Park. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Zion his name Park. was Zion, Zion Park. Was his middle name National? No, I don't know. I don't think so. But yeah. Well, Bryce's middle name is not Canyon. Yeah, so. I know. We covered that in like in the last. Oh, episode. did we? Oh, because we talked yeah. about yeah. So like basically, we, it, it all tied <laughs> we in. Did, with, we did the episode, and then we got inspired that yeah, and it and it helped that there was a new moon, and it's the last couple months of the of the um, Milky Way. Milky season. Way. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Man. All yeah. right. Well, are you ready? Are we going to get this party started? With I think we're ready. I think we're ready, and I think I think Robbie's thirsty. He looks thirsty. Yeah, he, he looks thirsty. thirsty. Yes. Okay. So beer share number one. Beer share number one. So our beer share number one for you, Robbie, is from Unsung Brewery Company, mm-hmm. and they're located in the beautiful city of Anaheim. Mm-hmm. They're in the Packing District area. They're at 500 uh, Anaheim Boulevard, Unit B, um, right there on Anaheim, just south of Broadway, Yep. and just right there at Santa Ana Boulevard, right? Yeah. Unsung, put, uh, potential evil lurks at every step of the brewing process. Unsung Brewing Company has forged to ensure... Great beers live to see another day. Nice. And uh, again, they're located in Anaheim. They also have a secret headquarters in Tustin, where they do all their brewing at. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but they don't do anything, uh, no tasting there yet, but they're getting ready. So what we have is the Luminino. Lu, Lu, Lumino. 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 <laughs> it's a classic Mexican-style locker for summer days when a crisp, Refreshment is the first thing on your mind. Pisner malt and corn provide a balance of smooth cracker taste and a touch of sweetness for maximum crushability. Mm. Nothing better than a good crushable Mexican lager. Exactly. Especially Uh, on a hot summer day. That's right. And it's best enjoyed at double headers and family cookouts. Yeah, I did read that on there. (laughs) I guess for a long baseball game, you can have a lot of these. Yeah. The ABV, what is it, 4.8%? Uh, yeah, I think 5% yeah, it's maybe. 4.8 is what's on the camera. Yeah, so anything oh, yeah. 5 or lower is basically a, a sessionable. So anything like this is going to be something sessionable, meaning you can have more than one and still be okay. Um, so it's not like your doubles and things like that. But uh, And you can compare oh, it to yeah. other Mexican lagers and things like that. So give it a shot. It's really, really light. Yeah. Really light. I could see how they could call it. Poundable or crushable. Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad? Okay. We're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. 
No, no aftertaste at all. No, no. Can you compare that to any of the Mexican lagers you had? Or honestly, no, not really. No? Okay. No. It's yeah. Just, yeah. I don't know. So this this is this kind of beer is definitely going to be more pure and less. Um, it's not mass produced, obviously. So you you have a smaller, I guess batch of things as opposed to a large amount of batch of things like the rice barley and uh, things like that there you go that was a good one there you go but the uh maybe i won't this time yeah i, I always try to get it right in the middle of your conversation i know because so. <laughs> you always try to throw me off it's like whatever dude. <laughs> so yeah i mean this is a, this is a craft beer mexican lager don and i have had a lot of mexican lagers in this area and, I, and if i'm not mistaken all the beers that we got are all from Southern California. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I have one from San Diego. I have, well, actually, no, I take that back. I have one from Fremont. I have one from Seattle. Oh, okay. So, but yeah, but most of the well, this one's this one's local. So, yeah. so this is one like you like you're like wow, this is okay, you know. But yeah. it's definitely one that you know if somebody would bring you a four pack or you saw it in the fridge, you'd be like, yeah, I'll drink that, right? Yeah, yeah, good. Like I said I used to drive by this place all the time. Yeah. So now you know what they have. Yeah. <laughs> but the. Uh, Unsung also um, has a good pilsner called the Enzio. They also have Shatter Spike IPA. They have the Nebuloid series, which is their IPAs they have, and they, they come out. So it's like a very weird superhero theme. If you go into the brewery, like we've been to the brewery, and they yeah. have like the giant Boba Fett in there, stuff, and all the pop pop vinyls all through there. So it's a fun fun little superhero place. And yeah, yeah. I remember always seeing the stand up, the cutouts. Yeah. In their yeah. window. Yep. Yep. So definitely, de- I mean, definitely one to pop in sometime and. You know, yeah, least, I forget. You, you know one of the bears. I forgot, Robbie. You used to live right down the street, and used to go down what Santa Ana to go get gas, right? To go to work. Yeah. Oh, and go to work. So yeah, he's yep. driving by it all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. And they just well, that one just that that spot opened what like maybe a year, maybe two years ago. Nah, two or three. Ninety six. Wait, I think it was no, ninety six. Not that. Not the one there. Not the one by the packing district. Yeah, that's well, has been there since ninety six. The tap, the one in Tustin, there they've been around probably since ninety six. But I don't, I don't think that tap room has been open. It's been open since I moved here, and I've been here next week will be five years i've been like that yeah it's been there yeah three years or so yeah maybe i don't know yeah i thought i I, something in my research i don't remember which one it was i mean but if if people are coming in from anaheim it's a good place to stop it's right next to the packing district to get the bite to eat there's a lot of stuff going on in there and there's actually anaheim brewing anaheim brewing companies right there too and uh umami burger is there yeah and they just opened the modern times too yeah that's and that's right down the street so it's becoming a nice little hot spot. If things are opening now, if you can go into all these places, I mean, I mean bark these on the calendar for future to dos. <laughs> the nice um, thing with Unsung though is they have that patio that's out in front, so they might be. They do, yeah. They've been doing so, that. I don't know. So I don't know. I actually don't know. Where'd you pick these up at? Uh, well, I got these, sir, at Redbeard's Tavern. Oh, okay, Taproom. that's right. Yeah, that is over in uh, Anaheim as well. Or is that orange? Uh, it's Anaheim. It's Anaheim. Yeah, it's on the other side of the Yeah, yeah. So. Right there on uh, Howell Street, I believe. Yeah. Pretty tasty. So shout out to Redbeard's Tap Room because they uh, definitely have a heck of a selection there. Believe me, very knowledgeable, very friendly. They have uh, outdoor seating as well. They have a small foods menu, and they have a TV out there. So if you want, and they've watch, had food trucks because bread's they been do. there. Yeah, bread's hot chicken. Yeah. So yeah, that's some good eats. It's down the street for me, so I'd like to go there and just you know stock up on on stuff like uh, for shows like today. Instead of running all over town, I. One stop shop, even though I did run all over town anyway, but it was, a, it was a different day. <laughs> have you had Unsung, Josh? Have you had the propeller head? Yes. How is it? Is that the. That's the amber ale with coffee. Yes, I have. Because I wanted to. I, did a, I actually did a taster when I was there a while back. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. Yeah, propeller is pretty good. I know you said something about wanting me to get that for you one time. When we were doing the Batman, I think the Batman episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Just, I and just, then we just couldn't get over there to get it. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah, <laughs> I just didn't do it. So, but I'll make it over there soon. And yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. So, this is the Lumino from Unsung Mexican Lager, and Robbie says it's it's okay. It's okay. That's good. It's good. Okay, good. We're good. <laughs> He's very excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you're gonna be my guinea pig later. <laughs> I knew it. But I think we're ready for beer share number two. Yeah, beer share number two. Beer share number two. Am I introducing I it I still now? need to get a sound effect for that. I know. <laughs> and then an explosion at the end. Beer share number two. <laughs> this is only beer share number two, Don. I know. We still got two more. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so beer share number two. Yes. Comes from one of our favorite places that we like to to visit. Yes. And yes. get all sorts of yummy stuff from is Jing, 
Gene. <laughs> Who's it's Gene? It's Gene Nevada. <laughs> G- Eugene Nevada. <laughs> Where's that at? Uh, Green Cheek. Green Cheek Brewery in Anaheim, or no, in Orange. Orange. And in Costa Mesa. So yeah. Orange mm-hmm. is located at 2294 North Batavia Street uh, in the beautiful city of Orange, just north of Ball Road. Yeah. Ball Road, but yeah. south of Lincoln. That's so, the exit I take when I go there. That's good. They have a nice drive through system right now. Uh, that's really good. And then Costa Mesa is at 2957 Randolph. Uh, unit B in Costa Mesa, and that's just down the street from Windsor Brewing. The former place of Barley Forge? That's right, and a ride across the street from... Gun Whale Gun Ales. Gun Whale Ales. Down the street yeah. from Salty Bear. Yeah. That's a nice little spot to go to. And around the corner from one of Robbie and I's favorite place where we were yesterday is TK Burgers. Oh, yeah. TK Burgers. Always good. Always good at TK. So we have Australian... For pale, Australian for pale is an Australian style pale ale, pale ale with Galaxy Muteka and Nelson hops. Oh, that Nelson's back again. Th- that left yes, the, he, that episode he, I did with he, that man. He likes like, to visit every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, um, it's a 2019 gold medal winner at the Great American Beer Festival dun, dun, dun. in the Australian style pale ale category. This super hoppy pale ale gets. Hit in the boil and and in the dry hop with some of our favorite Southern Hemisphere sops hops. Wow, sops hops. Uh, sops hops. It's like a sock hop. So, yeah, like the fifties, right? Mm-hmm. The malt flavor is almost <laughs> non-existent. Like the Sadie Hawkins dance. Let's go. Let's go, Don. <laughs> <laughs> the malt flavor is almost non-existent with the True. flavor pile. Pl- Plow fly Jeez, this guy can I talk. Know. I mean, come oh, on. Today. Yeah, give me the Hawaiian words and I can knock them out. <laughs> oh, I know, right? These American words are just dang Haluki hard. Haluki Laki Maki Mountain. <laughs> yeah. He's like, bam. <laughs> um, so the malt flavor is almost non-existent with the flavor profile only showcasing these hoppy beauties. Mm-hmm. The lime flavor pops the most with peach rings and... Mango trailing behind mm. comes in at five. How's that sound, Robbie? Does it sound delicious? Eh, not too bad. Okay, not too bad. He says, like I, one thing I got to ask Robbie before you crack this open is like, like I, you know, because you've hung out with Don and I a yeah. lot, and we talk about craft beer and you know about this stuff. But what is your ideal beer? What is, what is your what do you go to? I was like, people listening probably want to know what does Robbie drink? Like my normal go tos are just simple, either like Civico, Miller Lite. Okay. Of course, like Corona usually are those main four. Okay. Every now is, that, is that what you consider a beer to be? No. Okay. I know there's more to it, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Just usually what I go for. Just cause keep it at that. Okay. So this, this one here, I was actually in 2019. Um, is, I, as you said, it was the uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I Great American, the story. American Beer Festival. And when I saw Green Cheek won gold in this... I actually like went to the brewery like right away. I was like, and I told the wife, I was like, "Hey, this one gold. I'm, they have it on tap. I'm going over there right now." She's like, "Really?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> so I I went straight there and uh, got the beer, bought some other beer to take home because they didn't have this in cans yet, like they do now. And had a beer, took a picture, put it on Instagram, blah blah. blah did the whole thing, and then uh, had to go to work later. <laughs> so. <laughs> But yeah, so it, but it was one of those things where I was so excited for them and happy that they got a gold medal. That I was like, I'm going right now, and I'm getting getting a beer because it's it's not that far for me at all, at all. I mean, I, I literally get on the 57 and 57. Yeah, 57. yeah, 57. Yeah. I always get 57 and 55. I've been here for five years. I still don't even know. <laughs> it's okay. 50 whatever. Yeah, <laughs> one of those. Yeah, I did that when I lived in Dallas too. They had like two main highways going through, and I got them all mixed up, but. But this is the Australian for pale. So if you want to taste what a gold medal Australian mm. pale ale tastes like, this is it right here. Ooh. Yeah, he's making, <laughs> he's making a face already. We're, and we're slowly, we're slowly <laughs> working you up. So, yeah. yeah. I'm not too sure about this one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe give it a few minutes because... Yeah, I sometimes mean, this, it opens up a little bit, and that's your first taste. I mean, I remember a quick story while you're. <laughs> I was I was uh, a while back when I was in my younger days. I went to I went to uh, visit. I was with my buddies, and we went to go visit his cousin who was attending Ohio State University. Okay, the the Ohio, Ohio, Ohio State, State University. University, and but he went and bought beer for us, and we were drinking natural light ice. And if you wanted a beer, that was the beer you had to drink. 
And I could not stand it for the life of me. I could not stomach it, could not put it down. And they kept saying, well, it's an acquired taste, an acquired taste. And then it never became an acquired taste. That stuff is garbage, okay? And it's just terrible. But, uh, but the thing is, like, there is some stuff that, like, what, like, you didn't like IPAs, I didn't like IPAs. And I'm not here to convince you. I'm here to just have you taste different things. Just push over the edge. Yeah, just kind of a little nudge, <laughs> you know, because, you know, we think, uh, we think everybody should drink craft beer. That's just us. Yeah, yeah. drink independent. Yeah, independent beers. You know, support beer local breweries. Yeah, so strong life trail. Don, what do you think of it? It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's a little hoppy. Well, well, it's nice and golden. Yeah. In two ways, I guess, with, yeah. the, with the metals and the... Yeah. But it's good. It's easy drinking. Yeah. Well, it doesn't, I, it doesn't like, kill you on the back on the backside. No. No, it doesn't. It, it, it's such a smooth... I, to me, this is a smooth pale ale. It's not yeah. necessarily to the point where it's too hoppy to be... Uh, IPA style. Yeah. But you're going to have an IPA today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just Whether learned. you like it or not, you're you going might have to a drink couple different IPA. I have at least two different variations of them. So. Yeah. Um, but I, I made sure they're not too intense and too, like camping, it's intense. Yeah. But they're going to be good. One's a hazy, juicy. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> He's like, just as long as they get another one of those Luminos afterwards and wash <laughs> it down. <laughs> all right, I got a Pilsner for you later too. So Try Those are all good. Yeah, pilsners are all good. Uh, I'm, you know, and the funny thing is, I was like I was telling you earlier, I've been leaning towards pilsners more. That's good because Green Cheek is making killer pilsners right yes, now. They are. Uh, Chapman Crafted has has their their pills, which yes. is which is good. Yeah, just been kind of going that way. I like. I just like the nice, easy drinking. Yeah, I know when Robbie and I always go out doing photo and stuff. I mean, there's always. I think every single time. I think the tradition for us is where. Traveling around the around the Southern California, Arizona, Nevada side is we always have what Pacifico with us usually. I think yeah. that's our tradition. Okay. So it's all good. All good. We've got some pretty good places. Yeah. Where have you guys been to? But we're kind of, well, that was English. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking like me now. Dang it. <laughs> You're rubbing off on me, Don. <laughs> um God, where have we been? Done what? Page. Page finish. for well, Antelope Canyon. For for those of us that listen that are not from California, where is this? Okay, so <laughs> well, it's not in California. Yeah. So Page, Arizona, up there by. Uh, okay. What is that? Lake Powell. Lake Powell. Yeah, okay. So it's northern Arizona, southern there you go. Utah. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know. How do you describe them? I mean, they're they're just these uh, antelope, it's the antelope Antelope Canyon, upper lower. Okay. Horseshoe been there. Bend. Been there twice. Uh, or was it Monument Valley? I think is the farthest that we've gone. Yeah, oh, the Monument Val- Valley is that in a movie? Yeah. yeah, we went out to the to where Forest for, Run, Forest Run, where he okay, just. Okay, I was gonna say. Okay, this is where I'm so stopping. That's the iconic seed. Where yeah. okay, yeah, yes. we went there. Yeah, you got to get people the visual by hearing our <laughs> yeah. our wonderful, beautiful voices. Yeah, so, so. Yeah. they actually have <laughs> a sign that says Forest. Yeah, it has a sign. Oh, out really? There. Yeah, oh, that's cool. It was on my story for a while. Yeah. It was, it was kind of interesting to be out that far and just turn around and see the monuments and stuff. That's cool. Um, mm-hmm. But Page was good. We've been there twice. The first time we went was 2014? Four, yeah. 14, because it was five, almost five years between our trips out there. Wow. Um, and that town blew at, up, too. What was that? So that town blew up, too. Our, yeah, because the first time when we went, it was like they had Horseshoe Bend that's, Horseshoe Bend that's there. It's like... They always call it the Grand Canyon, but I don't know really if that's the top of the Grand Canyon. It's just south of the Davis Dam. Oh. Um, and Robbie and I are, okay, let's go. And I, we got all our camp camera stuff, and we thought it was this nice little easy hike, and it was up over this hill, and you know it was pretty warm. And you walk out, and yeah. there's like no railings or whatever. And Oh, just right there. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess they put a railing up now. So yeah, so, yeah, so we went back in 2019. And we didn't even go because they had set up a parking lot and you have to pay now. And Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, just I, think, I think what people were doing was they were just putting up, you know, Instagram was blowing places up. And that, that, I, yeah, you know, I, I heard that the, the problem with Instagram is like all these pictures that show up now, people are starting to go to these places. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah. been, it's been nice to see the pictures, but at the same time now people are like invading yeah. all yeah, these places. Instagram and Pinterest and I think oh, even yeah. Reddit is yeah pushing it over the top now and so then when we did 
um, the first time we were out there in 14, we did the photo tour. And that was pretty good because it wasn't like we were there in the midday and you're basically indoors because it's, you know, this cavern with, uh, I'll post a picture on Instagram okay, on our website for it. Yeah. Um, but we were lucky enough to have a photo guide who would stop traffic for us and we could get these pictures that basically nice. have nobody in them. Nice. Yeah. Because so. any, any of those pictures that you see with nobody in there, they're on the photo tour because that's oh, the only okay. way you're going to get it. Oh wow! Completely empty. Those. So if you if you're close to claustrophobic, you're not gonna like that tour. <laughs> oh. And then just up the street is the lower. I always get these mixed up because the upper is below. Okay. The lower. Okay. And and how they justify it is the upper is above ground, and the lower is you actually go down into the ground. Oh okay. How how deep do we go on the, on the lower? I About 50, 60 feet, 80 something feet? Something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's some pretty crazy stairs going down. Yeah. The first time we went in 14, it was, it was empty. Yeah. Nobody. Hardly anybody there. And in 2019, when we went, it was just packed. Wow. Until it kind of got thinned out. Once it got thinned out, we were pretty good. Yeah, so check the timeline when Instagram took off, and then there yeah. you go. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's basically it, right? Yeah. Because the last time we, though, when we went, we did it for the night tour through Upper. Oh, nice. So. Night tour was pretty cool. It was just, I mean, how you many say people? say night tour. I already think it's cool. I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how well, many, how many, Robbie, how many people would you say, like, during the day? Oh, you do it, probably hundreds to hundreds, thousands. Thousands. Jeez. So when we did the night tour... How many people were there? Just me, you, and the guide. <laughs> me. What? It was just the three of us. Like, that was it. There's, yeah, because there's only one company that does the night tours. Okay. And they book them. No, it doesn't matter if you book by yourself or I think they take up to eight or ten people. Oh, okay. And it just happened to be that when we booked it, we were the only ones You're that booked it. You were the only ones that booked it. Yeah, it was awesome. So it was just, just the three of us out there for, I think, an hour and a half, two hours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Roman did us well. <clears throat> he, he kept us out there a couple hours. You don't get to go further into the into the antelope canyon into the upper canyon yeah um but you get to spend some time um you know it's completely dark he brings what one little tiny light and you know we're shooting up out into the into the sky so we're getting the nice starry night and that sounds he's fun. just using this t- little tiny little tiny light that just yeah, it was like a little lantern yeah this little light of mine the yeah let it shine. exactly <laughs> and then we spent some time outside doing uh, steel wool photography and that's where you take steel wool put it in a wire whisk and then you catch it on fire oh <laughs> you can use a battery but sometimes we just use a lighter yeah and you spin it around and it just and you take a long exposure and it shoots these sparks out so you get these get these nice long trails of i don't know would you call it fire I don't sparks know. sparks Sparked. Yeah. yeah. It's basically and like so, a big sparkler spinning. Oh, nice. Robbie and I are down on the, on the sandy floor. Roman just like, okay, I'll be right back. And he starts climbing up, and he gets up on top of the Antelope Canyon, and off he goes with his... Nice. Yeah. I'll post one of those, too. Yeah. It'll be fun to see. That's cool. It's uh, pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Where else have we been? Yosemite. Did Yosemite. Yeah, we did Miss, Miss Trail. One time. I, yeah, everybody knows Yosemite. Yeah. yeah. Have you been yet, Josh? No, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> everybody keeps bringing me patches back there. <laughs> we know you like patches. I'm like, yeah, I just haven't been there yet. <laughs> this trail is just incredible. That the, hi- the hike to Vernal, Nevada Falls is, is great. Two of my swimmers told me yesterday at practice, oh, we're not going to be here for a week. We're going to Yosemite. And I'm like, okay. I said, I want proof. And that means you've got to do the hike all the way to the top of Vernal Falls and take a picture and send it to me. Yep. So we'll see what day I get that. So, yep. <laughs> and I told them how lucky they are because it's only going to be thirty percent full. Oh, that's nice. Because of everybody doing reservations because of the yeah. And I, and I heard it's actually really hard to get a reservation right now. So. Just, just crazy, but yeah. So Robbie, how's that uh, green cheek uh, Australian pay? Is it is Australia it warming up pale? to you yet at all? No, uh, it wouldn't be my first choice. No, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't go out of my way for it. Okay. Well, we probably know. should have got south of the border too. That would have been a. Well, I don't know if they have it right now. Yeah. A green cheek. I don't know if, if you guys. No, got, I don't think they do right now. Yeah. No, because I, I, I. They've was, got so many good beers. Well, they're, they're, the other Brian Swim Test. They really. A while back, I read something. Really, they really enjoy making like the loggers and the pilsners. 
but they make the only reason they make IPAs is because they make them really good. Yes. Okay. And this, and then they make a pale ale that wins a gold medal. So <laughs> blows my mind. Blows my mind. But I've I've waited in long lines for the, like the other Brian. Other Brian, which is a uh, kind of a hazy, double dry hopped uh, IPA. Oh, and it's, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's they, they, to me. There's a lot of good. My wife isn't a big fan because they don't have a lot of stouts there and oh, okay. stuff. I mean, they they have a couple, but she didn't but didn't care for the ones they had. So, but they you you go to breweries for what they do really well, and I and there's a documentary I watched about food one time is where if there's a if there's good food somewhere and you really want to try it, you drive the distance to get to it. Yeah, and you have it. it for beer, for me, is like if there's something I. I need to try or want to do. I, I should do do that due diligence and drive the distance. If I can't get it like brought to me, yeah. So that, it's just like Russian River Brewing, and mm-hmm. Pliny and and Pliny, Pliny the Elder, Pliny the Younger, Younger didn't show up. I would literally have to drive the Russian River Valley to go get it. Yeah. So and I would, but since they bring it to me, I'm like, man, I'm gonna <laughs> go up there. <laughs> it's like, well, why? You or, just gotta wake up at four thirty in the morning. To that's get right. <laughs> Where is that at? A Russian River. Is oh man, this is what we do when we make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I have to edit everything. Yeah, it was up in uh, Santa, Santa, Rosa. Santa like, Rosa. There's a wine area. So Vinny, this the head brewer up there, was used to work for a winery. And then he did um, work for uh, something called Blind Pig. I should have done my research. I, did, I wasn't expecting to talk about this. That's why. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Pliny the Elder is one of the biggest IPAs that people seek out. Right now, oh, okay. uh, Pliny the Younger comes out like once a year. Once a year, barely. Yeah, like yeah. In, like April ish. Was it April? Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 I think it's April. Is it? No. Is it? No, because it, no, it was, was February. It, it was pre-COVID. It was so. February. Yeah, I was going to oh, say. I said the Sea World. I'm sorry. No, no, <laughs> you, you said the OK version of it. Oh, okay. Um, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Febu- It was February. Yes, it's February. Okay, so it's February. Don and I went to Hollingshead Delicatessen in Orange on in Main Orange. Street, and uh, <clears throat> got it at like four thirty in the morning. We sat there, something like that, and they yeah. didn't open until what eight? Was it eight? Ten? Or was it ten? Yeah, because I think it was ten. Yeah, we just and to to drink a beer. Yeah, <laughs> and you could, and they they had it on tap, and so you could we, only buy yeah a was, ten ounce. You can't like take it to go. Ounce, it was yeah. like it was like here you go. Yeah, and I bought a sandwich and. <laughs> I think I was starting my no meat at the time. Ooh, I don't know. I had the egg salad sandwich. That's oh, that's I, right. So I was doing the no meat, but I was not. You were dabbling. I, I wasn't like that far into what I'm doing right now, which is, it works for me. But anyway, I don't want to get into that. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that was, but what was, what was your reaction when you drank that plenty younger though? Oh, it's just an IPA. That's, that's what I said. <laughs> like, dude, we've been out here for like six hours. And you're like, it's just an IPA. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't, I don't know. That one actually had Nelson in it too, right? That was the one that yeah, brewed with Nelson. I think, I think it was when Nelson, he said yeah. when he came out and said they did a variation brewed it with Nelson. Everybody was like cheering because <laughs> Nelson hops to, is it's in this is very really popular with uh, craft beer drinkers and stuff. So, so hey Don, hey Josh, hey Robbie, yo, I guess it's time for beer share number three. Beer share number three, number three okay so th- this one i got okay so now i'm really going to get out of robbie's comfort zone <laughs> your safety net is gone sir Ooh. this is time to get Ooh. to the next level this is a, a beer i picked um and i i was really trying to think about what to do what to get that's not i don't want to turn you away from things i want yeah. to, i want to I, I literally want to seduce you and bring <laughs> you to the dark side if you will to me, Head Full of Dynamite Hazy IPA from Fremont Brewing series is one of my favorite ones. And I, I every single one that they do, highly rated, super good for me, to me. And Don has had, I think, have you had, did I bring any to you? I probably drank them all before I didn't bring them, bring them over. <laughs> from Fremont? Yeah. Well, the, the Head Full of Dynamite series. Oh, no. This is the first Head Full of Dynamite series. Okay. So this is version 20. In the, and of course... My laptop laptop died, so I'm, I uh, don't have that. He's much. winging his notes. Yeah, you know, just stringing it. This one's six point eight percent by volume. It's a Indian Pale Ale. This is uh, the hazy version, if you will. Uh, Fremont Brewing out of Seattle, which is down the street from the Troll. I don't have the address. The Troll. 
<laughs> the troll under the bridge. The troll under if, the bridge. And if you uh, are interested in that, you can go to our www.atomicbeershow.com. Right. And watch episode seven. Episode seven. Episode seven. Wow. I know. That's so long ago. Right. Yes. That is our, yeah. as to date, that is our number one episode so, right now, by the way. I, really? Mostly, most downloaded episode. Well, maybe this one will get there too. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so let me just read the back of the can really quick. So we are a family-owned craft brewery founded in 2009 to brew artisan beers made with the best local ingredients we can find. Head Full of Dynamite is an ongoing series of hazy IPAs, each one different from the one before. Check out our website for the malt and hops used in the one in your hand at fremontbrewing.com. So friends bring happiness into your life. Best friends bring beer <laughs> and tacos, right? Yes. Oh, okay. I always forget tacos. Um, but yeah, no, I've had multiple versions of this beer and it's, I, I've not been disappointed. Granted, I didn't like IPAs at one time. I said this all the time, <laughs> but once you get to the point where it becomes a thing, maybe I seek out certain things and like when Headful Full of Dynamite gets a new release out, I'd like, I'd like to find these. So I this would. is a hazy and you can tell it's a lot different than the look. Uh, it's a lot, uh, it's not as clear as the other stuff lot, we've been drinking. Yeah, a lot cloudier. Yes, yes. Thus the haze. Haze. Originated in New England. New England haze. The New England area. The New England IPAs. Now it's well. all the rave. Yeah, like if you have a brewery and you the don't have a rave. hazy IPA, then you're not making you the money you should. You might as well just close up, yeah. Well, maybe. Unless you have right in the nuts or... That's true. Or your double stuff. Because yeah. he doesn't have a hazy. That's true. He does not. Oh, he's got some good IPAs. Yeah. Double Karma. Anyway. <laughs> Legends <laughs> Brewing. <laughs> Legends Brewing in Anaheim, right off of Lewis Street and Ball Road. All right. So you, you've had a Hazy before. I've tasted them. Okay. You've tasted them, but you've never, and you have not had a head full of dynamite, Don. No, but okay. I've had plenty of Hazy. All right. Well, cheers to you guys. I, I hope you enjoy this. Oh, that's calmer than the last one. Yeah. A little bit. Still wouldn't go out of my way. You wouldn't go out of your way, well, and that's fine. You know, and I don't expect you to be like, like a light, like a switch to turn to be like, yeah. Oh my god, I never realized how much I loved IPAs. I, I don't expect that no. at all. But I just want to, I my my like, I slowly give the people's like, is it really? Is it terrible? No, it's not terrible. But yeah. it's just not. It's not your style. Yeah. Yeah, but in in time it could. I mean, be. if you went to a party and that was the only thing they were serving, you would drink it, right? If you had no other choy. <laughs> <laughs> if they twisted my arm. Yeah. I was like, well, okay. Did I ever tell you a story about my dad? <laughs> and his, you, you might. You've oh, told me plenty of stories I, about your dad. but Okay, well, there's a time he was at my cousin's house. He got a new, oh, I haven't heard he got a new house. And uh, before it's all, this was years ago, so it's all remodeled and done and stuff. So they're out there having beer and whatever. And my dad, he's a Bud Light drinker. My dad and Every time he comes here, I, I I will not let him drink Bud Light. I will take him places to try different things. He He's does bit, like Kona. He does Longboard, like Kona. Long yes. lager. Yep. And I got him into a lot of Hefeweizens, and he loved uh, he loved that German beer that Hopperazzi had a while back. Oh, I wow. can't remember what it was, but he was like that, and he still talks about that beer. And so, and that was a very intricate beer. I was like, wow, I'm really surprised you like this. <laughs> There's stuff at Burley Forge he liked. I was surprised he liked. He's like, oh, this is a good beer. I'm like, oh, okay. So it's just finding that taste bud. It's yeah. just like wine drinking, if you think about it. Um, oh, yeah. You know, you got, there's so many different things you could taste, and one will hit you. One will hit you. I mean, I hit it tonight, <laughs> but, I, but I will eventually. But, um, but no, he, <laughs> they had Fat Tire at, at the party. Oh, yeah. He was at. And he, and he just like, what the hell is this? This is disgusting. <laughs> this is terrible. And I, I, I agree to an extent. I'm not a big Fat Tire fan, but... There's stuff New Belgian has made, and then they got bought out, so I don't really buy their stuff unless there's a sale at Ralph's and I get some Voodoo Ranger or something. But Voodoo's, Voodoo Ranger is pretty good. Yeah, I don't yeah. have a problem with it. Yeah, but uh, so when I when my dad came out, I was like, well, "We're going to breweries. Well, what kind of beer are you going to get me?" He says, and he's like, "You know what I like." I was like, "Yeah, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to do you wrong." Yeah. It's like, just don't get me anything like Fat Tire. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> like, <that's> what, <laughs> So any any beer is that when it comes to craft beer, when it comes to my dad, it's like as long as it don't taste like that damn fat tire. <laughs> I was like, okay, we can do that. We can do that. So I can't remember the last time I had fat tire. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's probably at one of my friends' house out in Corona. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it was weird because when I was back in college, it's, yeah. Now we're now we're now I'm really dating myself, but fat tire wasn't widely distributed out here. Well, in Ohio at the time, and. One of my fraternity brothers brought some to the house, and he was um, 
all like, well, I got these brought to me from Colorado or something and some friends and like, you could taste it, but you can't have one. He was really protective about it. And like, <laughs> I look back at it. I'm like, bro, fat tire. Come <laughs> on. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it was one of the things back then. But New Belgium wasn't terrible. They're still not. And, you know, they just fell to the big money people that bought them out. Yeah. That's all. But it doesn't mean I had to buy it. I wonder, like, when they sell, I wonder if there's a... Because the company that we all worked for, well, you didn't work for them. Robbie and I worked for them. Hmm. That we sold to the company that you work for. (laughs) (laughs) And, I mean, it was written into the contract that the old owners couldn't open something new for a certain amount of years. Uh. And then, like, today, the wife and I went to Keenan Coffee in... Newport Beach, and Keenan was developed by Dietrich, who owned Dietrich Coffee. But Dietrich sold all of his to somebody. Uh. But then he opened up just two small stores. So I'm wondering if, do you go out and sell, and then, I don't know, later on you reopen under a different name and start brewing differently? Or is there something written written into into your sale of your business that you're not allowed to do something for a certain amount of time? be oh, interesting to I don't you know I don't know because the, the there's a pizza place in my, where I went to college called Miles Pizza. I, okay. I don't know if I talked about them or not. No. But they that was like the pizza place to go. People loved it or they just were like okay with it, you know, but but they were really sad when they laid left. And there's another pizza place that took over, but they never gave away their secrets to how they made their sauce and their dough and all this stuff. And it was they were like thick like literally I could eat two pieces and I was done. Yeah. That's how it was. It was Thick pizzas, they were great. And they actually had a, they ended up doing a really big, good beer program towards the end there. And then they moved to like North Carolina or South Carolina or something. And they've been following people. And, uh, and then, it, then it, they ended up opening up a shop down there. Huh. So they all retired, but they, they're like, well, we just can't get away from it. So they opened up a pizza. They're doing great there. And then they started doing um, make your own pizza to deliver it to wherever. So people back in Ohio, in that town, Bowling Green, oh, Ohio, okay. To get those pizzas, and they can just make have their remember the old pizzas again, and it's just it's things like that. It's like now the people that bought their spot couldn't do the same thing they were doing. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. Well, I, I miss uh, pizzas. Why don't I? I still eat pizza. <laughs> yeah, pizza's pizza. good, man. I mean, well, you know, I mean, Robbie, Robbie, and I crazy ass. Robbie and I drive to freaking Las Vegas to get pizza. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, little turnarounds. When we're out, yeah, we've done that. Just like we're going out chase Big Boy. <laughs> oh yeah, Big Boy, the locomotive. Oh and yeah. He always makes what? it on the show. I know he does. <laughs> it always comes back to Big Boy. Yep. And we end up at Naked City Pizza in in Las Vegas and. Well, we did that twice, right? Couple, yeah, twice. Twice yep. in Naked City, and then we did the one turn. Well, that's around the, we did that's it kind of been within the last two years because no, this you done this? like the last like. We, year. I think we've done year. three. Uh, yeah, last year because you the, talked about it. Like, uh, yeah, okay, this yeah, because yeah. yeah, we went right after the shutdown because okay. we wanted to see the strip empty. So we just oh, basically right. yeah. like let's go get pizza and drive the strip. That's right, yep. and it was just basically a turnaround. Yep. So and then we did it like a month later just to go get. Barbecue. Barbecue. That's right. Yep. At John Wool's Meats and Roadkill Cafe. Yeah, yeah. He told me all about the, told yes. about how they had and the, the burnt, screens and all this and, and the that. burnt ends and oh my gosh. Oh my so, gosh. Good good eats in Las Vegas. The burnt ends. It's worth the four hour drive for well turnaround. You guys crushing on that uh hazy there. Yeah. yeah. That's good. It's Bobby's just tasty. like yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you didn't, if you like that, you're gonna love the last one. Yeah. <laughs> but thankfully, it's only twelve minutes. Robbie, where else do we want to go for photo? I mean, we have any? Like, we want to go to uh, the national, the tree. Oh, what is it? Sequoia. No, the car place out oh, north the of the international car forest. Oh, the international car forest, which is up there in Goldfield, Nevada. Okay. So you're like halfway between Vegas and. Uh, Reno. Reno. Just about yeah. halfway. Okay. Um, we're talking about Death Valley. Yeah. So you do all that in like, so you got Rhyolite and... Rhyolite, Ghost Town. Ghost Town and all that. So you'd be right there in the middle of Death Valley and nice. all that area. Okay. But so there's, there's still places that, you know... Yeah. 
now that I'm opening up my schedule a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be able to hopefully and I, and squeeze I never know what my schedule is going to be like. I know. Week. It's like super so we've fun. got we've got a few places that we still want to hit up. You know, we like enjoy we enjoy doing our star trails and our night photography and stuff. Yeah. And well, yeah. I definitely had fun going with you guys. <laughs> I mean, I, I probably drink all your beer, but yeah. it doesn't matter because <laughs> you know if you don't drink it, then we are. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. I don't know. We've had some good nights out there, like when we were doing our star trails at the was it the Mill Street. Yeah, when we did the truck. Yeah, there's a truck out there, like right next to the Barker Dam. There's a trail that goes out to, what is it, the Mill Street? What is it called? It's, yeah, something like that Mill Street. Or it's a mill. Yeah, it's like an old Bennett. Yeah, mill. it's but a mill. The, but there's a couple of extra, there's a couple of trucks that are out there that are just falling apart. They're all rusty and everything. Oh, wow, yeah. And we set up, we set up, just Robbie and I did Star Trails, two and a half hours. <laughs> we just sit there and <laughs> sit in our chair and drink beer and listen to our cameras click on and off for two and a half hours. And oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. It's good. But yeah, those other places we'll, we'll get to. Yeah. So you, it, you just went, didn't you to the international car? Yeah. Um, yeah. I ended up hitting up Rhylite and the car forest. My plan was to do night photo at Rhylite, but it got clouded out. So we ended up just kind of doing a loop to go on the outside of Area 51 and hit the extraterrestrial highway oh, and come yeah. back to oh, Vegas. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, you, just, you just hit the ball right into Josh's court. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So that, that was an interesting uh, drive because that was like another like three-hour loop back to Vegas plus. Yeah. But it was cool like to, you know, I wasn't planning on hitting up the car force. It just happened to work out. Just be, yeah. So it was sporadic. So nice. it was really, it was kind of cool to actually catch it, but it'd be nice to go back and spend a little more time there. Oh, yeah. And then also on the way back around is check out the Clown Motel. The Clown Motel. Just in, uh, was that Tonopah or something like that? Yeah, I think so. So it's the whole clown themed hotel. Oh boy. (laughs) I don't know. I just think uh, Rob Zombie movies. (laughs) Captain Spaulding. (laughs) That's kind of what this place looks like. Oh geez. Here we go. And (laughs) supposedly it's haunted because it's right next to like a a cemetery and everything. Even better. (laughs) (laughs) So, but we didn't go up, we didn't go up that far once we got to like Tonopah made the right hand turn to get to I forget what highway is like 60 state highway 62 or something like that for the yeah. extraterrestrial highway oh well yeah someday I'll I need to do that yeah <laughs> it, it's worth it yeah yeah so I mean there's not like I said it's like because we were going through it at night so it'd been kind of cool to go through during the day yeah you know because yeah. by the time we got to the little hot spot was at the little alien yeah the little hotel there they were closed oh yeah so and everybody says they're supposed to have decent food. Yeah. So. Yeah. Probably some merch. Things like that. I'm yeah. all about the merch. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Nipton. Nipton's got some good merch. I, yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> was, I, yeah. Nipton. Don't they have like the UFO houses there or something? They have uh, the teepees. 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 And they got like little eco cabins. And I think they were, they were working on restoring a few vintage trailers to rent too. Okay. But they've been closed like pretty much throughout this whole COVID. So I don't know if they've reopened yet or not. Uh, yeah. Cause that was, I, I follow like a Nipton thing on Instagram. Yeah. I know. I, I saw that. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Are you following me? Yeah. I'm following you. you. Stalking me. I'm, st- I'm internet stalking you. <laughs> Are you guys ready for beer share number four? Sure. All right. Always ready for beer share number whatever. Stout. Well, then it's time for beer share number four. <laughs> or if you're on the golf course, beer share number four. <laughs> was it in Caddyshack? Oh, I should have yelled too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is funny. I just watched a clip of Caddyshack the other day. But anyway, Robbie, I have, a, I only had a 12 ounce can of this left. This is a. Uh, Josh okay. was sampling before he came over. <laughs> no. I, I oh, sampled not on yesterday. This one? Oh, yesterday. Oh, no, I yeah. did sample this one yesterday. But this is uh, from Society Brewing Company out of San Diego, California. San Diego. San Diego. The whales, <laughs> what? <laughs> Just watch Anchorman to get that answer, folks. Uh, this is the Pupil. This is an Indian Pale Ale, an IPA. And the reason I picked this one, because when Don and I went to the California Craft Beer Summit last year now? Yes, last year. It was a year ago. Yeah, yeah, almost a year ago. Almost a year ago. This is one of the ones I remembered out of the whole gamut of the 30 plus, how many beers did we try? Um, a lot, a lot <laughs> of samples, right? And uh, this is one I remembered of. We might being, have been in. We the, might have been really, in the forties. Yeah. Uh, found it in well, just a little bit because I my notes are on my computer and it broke. So I'm going to read to you the can. So, 
Founded in 2012, Society Brewing Company celebrates beer as the world's greatest social uniter. I agree with this, by the way. Connecting people from all walks of life. I always said that if you want to get people together, have beer. Like, why would you go to a party and there not be beer? Because people are boring unless you <laughs> add beer. So, <laughs> We are a small team of hardworking folks in San Diego who strive to craft world-class beer, and we're proud to share it with you. So the pupil... The pupil is a tropical hop triumph. Bright notes of guava and mango with a clean and dry finish have made this IPA a crowd favorite since day one. It's a 7.5% ABV and proudly displaying the independent logo on the can. And uh, this is one of my favorite ones. I don't, I, I almost want to say it might be in my top five up there with the Nelson. Or I'm sorry, the Duet, but uh, from Alpine. I'm looking at my notes from the beer fest, and I did not try this one. You did not try this one. I do not have anything from well, this brewery for some reason. Well, holy! I moly. must have been in a different line. <laughs> Possibly, or you got a, or they I had multiple beers, and you did not get this. You got their other beer. That's a possibility too. I don't have anything written down from no, yeah, from society at all. No, oh, shame. that's weird. Unless I didn't, unless I didn't log it, hmm. which is weird. Interesting. I just have the major stars right by Beechwood Brewing Vanilla Fudge. <laughs> oh yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, there's all that, good on that. That and the other, there's some other ones that that's I, weird. I can't remember the other one from Northern California. I really liked. I had to try all their beers, like Make America Hazy Again. That was a good. One. That one was good. <laughs> yeah, and then I they must... had, they had something else too. It was really good. I can't remember the name of the brewery for life to me right now. But that was a year ago. And what happens when you get Taste so many beers, you forget things. So, we can drink this. We can look up notes. Oh, I was just like, <laughs> I'm looking at all American brewers. And, and do they still have the cherry limeade IPA? Oh, I don't know. I have to I just, check it out. I just, I just ran in and got the Blue Manchu and the thing. The oh, the what was whatever the peanut butter one's called. Oh, reminiscing. Yeah, we always think about <laughs> beers we've had in the past. Our our, our beer show list is huge now. This is what episode twenty. 26 uh, six? yeah yep. and we're this we're over the 70 Three to four we're over the beers. 70 beer mark at this point 70 beers we, that's a lot of beer yeah, well, we share lots of good beer lots of good beer so you guys ready to do this oh yeah uh, let's oh, the people wait. this is the people from society brewing company so cheers to the society brewing company cheers. robbie i hope this one wins you over i really yes, do this is said it smells better than the last one number four. That's good. beer share number four oh yeah, this is uh, this is better than the last. You like one. the okay, okay, good. That's good. Yeah. We're getting somewhere. Yeah, this is more of baby a, steps. Because <laughs> I w- I would consider this more I, I not so much a West Coast style IPA. It's not a, the obviously. I think a West Coast IPA is going to have more clarity than this would. Yeah. Um. It's still not hazy though. It's not a hazy. So, but um, at this in it might be the hops but, um, of the malt that you would like too, right? You think? Maybe. Yeah. So I'm not sure what what's all in here because my notes are gone. But yeah, this is a yeah. I mean, it's it's it, this one. This one has actually won a lot this of awards nice. too. This is nice. Yeah, it's, it's got a bronze for a uh, Great American Beer Festival. So it's it's a, just an award winning beer. All good here. Yeah. So it's always good to note. Um, doing the beer tastings of like thinking about beers you've had and relating to those and things. And now that I know that you're okay with this one dabbling. Yeah. yeah it's like, now I know what to lean towards next time when we have you back <laughs> or we go on a photo adventure. safari or something an adventure. Like, Robbie, look what I got for you. That's right. Yeah. Cause I can, I can lean definitely lean towards stuff more towards this style, which I think not too, it's not too, it's not, this is not a bitter IPA. No. It's not a piney taste. It's more of a, what, it was a the mango tropical, but not hazy. Yeah. Which can happen. Yeah. Not a big yeah. juice bomb. Yeah. So of the beers that you have tasted today, how would you rank them? Oh, there uh, we go. I don't know. The first one would probably be like out of all of them. That would be like my first go-to. Yeah. And then Luminino. Ooh. Probably the first two, and then this one, and then the one before this, I would skip completely. You skip simply. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Lumino, and Lumino. then you'd say the pale ale? 
Yeah, that one wasn't too bad. Okay. Like those would probably be the two. Like if they were if, like there's a cooler of beers. Like you go for those. I'd probably grab one of those okay. two out of the four. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Love it when my dog walks by. I know. <laughs> it's like if you hear the tap dancing in the background, it's just this big hound dog. Yeah. He's we're, we're right in the middle of the heat wave in the fallout shelter. It was like 90 degrees. So we decided that we would yeah. come inside to the air conditioned. And yeah. We checked that out. The hardwood floors. and We're not coming at the you straight pound from the coon, fallout shelter. The 100 pound coon hound <laughs> walking around. Yeah. 100 pound coon hound yeah. walking around. I like that. So That's good. Yeah. yeah that one was it's good. Bad. Oh, I got a big burp coming. <laughs> oh, no, that wasn't good. <laughs> so after you had all these beers, how how are you open to trying more? Yeah, like I'll yeah. Try, like I want like I said, if they're here, they're there. But you know, I'm well, what if, what if Don and I say, hey, we're gonna go meet at so and so? Are you gonna come join us? And, yeah, I'd meet him. Oh, he'll yeah. always meet. Oh, he'll yeah. always meet. <laughs> yeah, I always come down as long as he's not busy. We'll have to do that one night. What's that? We'll find a place to meet. Let's go to Modern Times. And then we'll just yeah, open call now. up Robbie and just be like, Yeah. Okay. You should wear a Brea. You're just a Brea now. Yeah, so. I'm just a Brea, so. Yeah. Is there anything else we want to try? Do we want to go off the grid and off of our... Let's do a swim test. What else? You want to do a swim test? Let's do a swim test. Okay, we'll see how good it holds up. Because this is a 12-ounce can, so we can do a swim test. It's 26. And honestly, like, swim test? Really? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think I think we should. I can't. Do it. I can't. This is the first beer share that we're repeating. <laughs> oh, did we? We did a beer share. Of yes. Something? Okay. It was beer share twenty five. Wow. I don't even remember what episode it was. Well, I mean, this is. I mean, this is for Robbie. You know, and, uh, and just yeah. to try and different things. This one's things. crazy. So, it's well. It's he likes society. Test. He liked the society one. Yeah. So he might like this one. So, so on the uh, on the side of all their cans, they have genius genius script written on them. Yeah, uh, this is one of my favorites because I am a swim coach. So listen, I can't say that we're fully swimming yet, but stoked, we're not sinking. Do your stretches, get your goggles on, and get ready to dive in. I'm really hoping that we can pass with flying colors. If not, at least we'll make it to the other end of the pool. And as always, drink while smiling. This is Green Cheek, so we're back to Green Cheek. Hazy Triple... IPA. Oh, swim it's a hazy. Test. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. And as I recall, and I haven't had this in a while, yeah. it's a pretty big juice bomb. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it happens. I, mean, I, I, I don't know. How. I know I'm going to be fine with it, but I'm just, I'm like, I'm, yeah. like, I'm reading Robbie's face right now. <laughs> yeah. But when we drink this, when we drink this, we're just like, how is this at 10%? And like, and it may, it may not be your your cup of beer yeah. <laughs> or a cup of tea, cup of beer, but um, but when you taste it, just be like, wow, like this is a ten percent beer. You would expect it to be heavier, yeah. um, hit you in the face more. So this is one of my favorites from them. Yeah, yeah. Attack with Love comes out soon too. By the way, on what Monday. was it? Attack with Love comes out Monday. Cheers. So cheers. Okay. Ooh. Oh yeah, that is pretty good. That oh my gosh, it's, that it's held up bad. really nice. It's not, bad. It's not yeah. as bad as I thought it was going to be. Okay, good. <laughs> it's just a big. It's it's just incredible. It's a and like when I was saying like how smooth it is, and you're just like, wait, it's a ten percent beer. Yeah, it's like you drink two of those, you're you're smiling. Yeah, <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Drink while smiling. No, this beer's making yeah. you smile while <laughs> you're drinking. That's right. Like, it made me drink. smile when I pulled it out of the fridge. Nice. <laughs> Very good. Very good. But yeah, so we're we're gonna we're gonna finish up this beer and enjoy it. And yeah. Hang what if, out. But so yeah. what have we learned today? What 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 exactly have we learned? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what did we learn? Great places for photo. Yes. And great places that we're gonna go for photo. Yes. What Robbie likes and what Robbie doesn't like. Yep. Josh's time in the fraternity. Did we talk oh, about that? Or did. was that off? Oh, was that? I don't know. Did we? <laughs> <laughs> Got into it a little bit. Yeah. Oh, the fat tire story? Oh, oh yeah. the fat tire. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And your dad. Fat tire and your dad. Yeah, he just doesn't like fat tire. We should get your dad on. We could. We could. That would be pretty fun. That would be funny. We, we could. Yeah. Yeah, he'd be down. Just got to call. 
But we had to do it earlier in the day because it's our three-hour time difference. Oh, that's right. Time zone. That means we just drink at four. <laughs> that's, yeah. happy, that's happy hour. Yeah. He's got to call in on his flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> huh? How <Okay>. dare you? <laughs> Dad, are you drinking a beer? Did you get that Kona? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know, but... So we, so we had a lot of great beer. Good beer. Yeah, we we started off with Unsung from yep. Anaheim. Yeah, do a quick shout out for all the breweries we did. And then we Could. ventured on to Green Cheek just up the road about, what, 10 miles? Barely. Not even that for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we went way north to Seattle area. Yeah. And did head the full head full of dynamite, dynamite Hazy IPA. Version 20. And then from... Seattle. We went all the way back down to San Diego. Yep. <laughs> Which you could take. I think you can take the train you from know, San Diego <laughs> to Seattle. Oh, you can. Yeah. I was just thinking, like, you know, have you seen Indiana Jones movies when he's flying? You had the the map and the red oh, line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was. I'm just in my <laughs> head right awesome. now. You said that. I'm like, <laughs> 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 you know, like, if that's how a uh, brewery travel works. That'd be yeah, great. that'd be awesome. Yeah. And then we had from Society Brewing Company, we had the pupil. The pupil. I, the Which pupil. I'm really IPA. happy that you were just not like. This is oh, awful. I was really yeah. worried about that one. I was really, really, I mean, head full of dynamite. I was like, eh. But the people I was really, like, worried about. And then we went off the chart and got the. Yeah. We, it, we played what's in Don's not, Bridge. And it's not as bad as he test. thought. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it's good. And it's a triple. So good. I'm glad yeah. you tried these different beers, different yeah. styles. And just, just to know that our, our biggest thing is to get people to go towards craft instead of, you know, the mainstream stuff and everything. And. We're really happy that you that you're here and yeah. try these things. And yeah, so, I think next time we go out, I think we'll just do. Uh, oh, that well, was a good one. <laughs> I was trying. <laughs> I think what we'll have to do is, well, maybe we'll do a Mexican lager, a Mexican lager trip with Robbie. Mexican lager tour, and yeah. we'll and we'll get the, like the south of south of the border from Green Cheek. We'll get the a la playa from Trademark. Um, maybe something the Mexican lager from Backstreet Brewing. Yeah, there's that. There's uh, Bootleggers has one, I think. <clears throat> there's a few other places. But yeah, we can definitely work. All good. That. Yeah. All good stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for listening to the show. Thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you, Robert, for being with us. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for we talk uh, about We talk about a, you a lot. On being a, this. Yeah, we do. Here. You're, you're <laughs> on here a lot. So <laughs> thank you for being our little guinea pig for a little bit. And uh, you guys, cheers. Drink good beer. And drink good beer. Cheers.